Yeah. Yep, so uh, firstly, um, we'll introduce ourselves. Uh, we are from the, the Yodagendi Group, uh, part of Dalaguru Aboriginal Corporation. And uh, the presentation today will just be me, uh, Gavin Singleton, and I know Rangazia Tarquin. And uh, we'll present to you and some of our, our work within uh, the Red Bear Reef space within Cairns, North Queensland, and Australia. Um, uh, firstly, um, we'd like to uh, uh, for the slide to change. Yep. Yep. yep so, firstly, I just want to uh, pay acknowledgements uh, to a number of people. I'd like to uh, acknowledge our, our creator, um, our ancestors, and our country uh, that we're working on. I want to acknowledge all of our uh, neighboring traditional owner groups of the Wider Cairns and Port Douglas region. Uh, again, I want to acknowledge uh, the reef restoration of the reef, uh, rainforest and reef uh, RRC, uh, the Australian government, uh, the Reef Trust Partnership, and also all of our partners and sponsors that we work with. Um, I also want to acknowledge uh, all the science that's gone into our Crown Dawn's uh, starfish. So, you know, some 10, 20 years, 30 years of, of people's lives within this work. So I just want to uh, pay acknowledgement to that and, and all the um, organisations in the space. Uh, this is very crucial. A bit about our presentation. Um, what I'll do is just quickly give you a brief overview of, of our, our natural cultural values within our, our sea country. I also want to just quickly acknowledge some of the impacts and challenges uh, that we that we face. Um, but also, I want to um, take a take a bit of a um, focus on some of the the, the wider traditional owner First Nation aspirations within Sea Country and the Great Barrier Reef space. And then I'll talk a little bit about um, some of our efforts, contributions towards uh, management actions. And then uh, we'll go through some of our lessons learned and then um, some opportunities um, going forward and how um, you know, others can support um, traditional owners in getting involved in, in the space of, of sea country management. For some background, I guess I just want to acknowledge that um, you know, the ocean, the sea, the salt water, you know, it's, it, um, well, water in general covers two thirds of the Earth's surface. Um, only seven percent of the planet is water. Um, you know, three thousand uh, billion people or more um, depend on on the marine and coastal environment, the resources, and you know, part of uh, everyday livelihoods. Uh, within the Great Barrier Reef space, uh, we know that it is one of the world's you know largest coral reef systems, natural wonders. And they're expanding across the you know, most of Queensland, eastern Queensland, uh, between the Torres Strait and the Bundaberg. Uh, and um, we know that it's um, you know, highly regarded, renowned for its uh, natural ecological values. We know that you know, com you know, rich biodiversity habitats that we have here, the flora and fauna, uh, threatened species and communities. Uh, not only that, um, we know that a lot of areas here are protected in terms of national park, green park. Uh, within the Cairns region, uh, we know that we have two world heritage areas side by side, uh, the wet tropics rainforest and the Great Barrier Reef. And, um, you know, depending where you are, um, not even, not, not, not just the Great Barrier Reef area, but you know, across Australia, across the world, we know that there are adjacent terrestrial values, you know, um, uh, backing onto our sea country, whether that be rainforest, uh, woodland, wetland, sand dunes, salt marsh, the list goes on. But I really just just paints a picture of um, you know we do have really high, uh, rich uh, ecological values. Um, you know, and I don't really have to explain too more about that. But now when I when I go into about the the cultural significance particularly of, of sea country here in North Queensland. Um, when we really dive into the cultural dimensions and perspectives, and we'll get to see you know, what, what 
what traditional island is the um, our world view of, of sea country within the Great Barrier Reef. There are you know, 70 plus traditional island groups who have connections to the Great Barrier Reef, the landscape and the seascape, and its catchments running in to sea country. And it also represents um, generations of living that access, use, custodianship of, of sea country. Um, and that the environment itself shaping who we are. So our respective uh, identities, our laws, our customs, our practices, even language, which is really shaped um, from our environment. And in particular, sea country, um, you know, a lot of the, the sea country animals, plants will be reflected in our language. Um, and, you know, you probably wouldn't find words for marine turtle, um, for dugong, you know, in desert areas or inland or Australia. Um, so that just shows you where the environment shapes who we are. Um, also to acknowledge that, um, you know, there are diverse cultural values on sea country. Uh, we do have um, storylines uh, which really tell us um, about uh, the creation of, of, of country, but it also tells us about the relationships between different places, uh, between different flora, fauna, and where people uh, fit into that system. Uh, we've got a lot of cultural heritage sites, uh, places of significance, and even cultural objects, our tracks that are still, still around across our sea country. Uh, in terms of our structures and technology, you know, that, that's all part um, of our everyday lives. I mean, the way we make our, our shelters, the way we design some of our artifacts, um, in terms of our governance systems around our laws and customs, how we regulate country, our own economy, and we've also got our own system of aquaculture. I mean, that's, that's demonstrated through fish traps and also agriculture as well. Um, in terms of our, our biocultural values, um, really, really important as well. We have culturally significant flora and fauna in ecosystems around, and also that, that, that sort of linked with the seasons and also to the sky, so different constellations, the moon and the sun, and what they play a part of that. And um, at the end of the day, some of these storylines, our laws and customs link back to our well-being and our safety while we're in country, making sure people uh, you know, have um, are our own good, good spirits while they're out there. And um, also the transmission of that knowledge through art, song, dance, and through language. And uh, so that this is all, all intertwined with our environment, with our ecological values, you have all of these cultural values that are linked into that as well and really um, tells us about sustainability, conservation of country, how we manage country um, is really, really, um, you know, important and serious part of, of those values right there. And, and also, it also um, guides the roles and responsibilities and where um, Trish Island groups have a role to play in that, in terms of family groups, clans, and for specific uh, places along the Great Barrier Reef, and for caring for specific uh, flora and fauna, whether it be marine turtles, mangrove ecosystems, or particular reef sites. Now, some of the, the impacts and challenges, I mean, this is pretty straightforward. I don't have to really explain all the impacts facing, you know, our sea country. Um, you know, some of those common things there around, you know, runoff, uh, waste and plastic out of, out of the reef, um, even non-compliant public uh, use activities, all the way through to some of the impacts to our, our cultural values, the traditional owners themselves, in terms of impacts to our cultural sites, having restricted access onto country, uh, limited resources um, and then capability, but also uh, the red tape with uh, tenure. Uh, so that, that, that goes back to access and, and resources. 
I want to acknowledge um, the, the work that's gone involved with some of our, in terms of the wider traditional owner um, aspirations across the Great Barrier Reef um, within Sea Country itself. Um, you know, we do have a number of plans and priorities out there, uh, whether that be the Reef 2050 plan or the traditional owner actions within, within that plan, or whether it's through the, the Great Barrier Reef Blueprint for Resilience and how traditional owners get engaged in that kind of work. But also there's the Strong People, Strong Country Framework, which really also talks about that, um, the traditional owners' aspirations um, and in priorities in, in the Great Barrier Reef management. There's also um, some alignment with, with the international uh, context as well. Uh, through the Convention of Biological Diversity, particularly Article 8 a and 10C, but also the Nagoya Protocol around um, and our co, co benefits of traditional knowledge um, and um, sustainable development goals, uh, you know, life below water, um, SDG uh, 14. So, where you know, the work that traditional one is doing on the ground, you know, feeding into the international context and to their state and national priorities. Um, you know, some of the, the key priority actions coming out of those plans and even within our local uh, community uh, plans, you know, some of the general themes there is around um, improving our governance and policy, business development, um, planning, getting involved in land and sea country planning, um, building capability and our skills to be involved in, in reef management, sea country management, infrastructure, you know, one of the main sort of aspirations is for traditional owner groups that have their own vessels, uh, vehicles to get out of the country to, to, do, to do work, um, resourcing, obviously that's, that's for everyone, um, creating employment, jobs for their people to be working on country, um, and, all, and some of these other things around you know, economic development, so fee for service, service delivery type work, procurement, um, education, so a lot of groups are looking in youth engagement, engaging younger people involved, and, and also through the Junior Ranger program, uh, also communication products through uh, videos, books, and things like that, um, but also getting access onto country, some areas are remote, um, or, or just too difficult to get to places uh, due to landscape uh, and things like that. So access and um, just getting involved in just general natural and cultural heritage management, just in general. So I'll talk a bit about some of our efforts, contributions in the space of, 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 our, of the Great Barrier Reef within the Cairns to Port Douglas region. Um, you now we've developed a number of different tools. Um, so using, so we've developed uh, different plans, a sea country plan. We've also developed a new cultural landscape management plan, linking in both land and sea, but also the cultural perspective on country. Uh, using tools such as our traditional use of green resources agreement, working in partnership with uh, the Australian government, Queensland government on, on the Marine Park, uh, developing different agreements, uh, data, database systems. Uh, we, we're using two different database systems at the moment when we're collecting our data through a range of program and, um, you know, looking at analyzing that data and, you know, how that informs our decision making and future management of the sea country. Uh, we've developed a 3D model of our landscape uh, as a way to engage our elders and our young people through that knowledge exchange. Um, and obviously our, our ranger program plays a huge part in, in the on-ground and um, implementing some of our uh, management aspirations from the elders, um, elders who have gone before us and how we carry that into the future. What I might do is I might get one of our rangers talking to talk about some of our key projects on in the Marine Park at the moment. Hi all, um, my name is Kaplan. Um, with the Eric and Rangers, and also yet again in New Um 
is a uh, training program uh, has a few uh, key points. One of them being um, uh, test of bird monitoring. Uh, we do our usual one that, uh, once a month at Michaelmas Cay, and uh, we've been doing it so commonly that we are now official service with uh, things like Parks and Wildlife, and uh, that's just with the counting of the birds and uh, monitoring and mapping of the Cay. We also do uh, biosecurity um, health checks at Michaelmas Cay with BirdLife Australia, and that's just checking ecosystems and possible threats to the birds. Uh, um, uh, shorebird surveys um, has taken place at uh, a few places along the coastline. Uh, uh, main ones would be uh, Elite Point in Red Island, and this is just checking the uh, the uh, nesting and roosting activities of the uh, shorebirds. And our target species would be the big stone curlew. Um, what also plays a huge part in our management is uh, marine de uh, debris and uh, waterway cleanups. So uh, with this cage, there's a lot of um, artificial marine debris, but also um, there's also um, washed up um, logs that could pose a threat to biosecurity. Um, we do this with Queensland types and uh, Tangra and Blue. And we also do um, clean ups at uh, Ellie Point in Red Island. And this is done with Airport and uh, Parlay. We also do uh, FIFA service clean ups at, um, in the urban creeks and drains around uh, in Cairns. And this is uh, mainly targeting the um, High level litter that goes um, in these uh, in these drains. Uh, another big key point is compliance for us because um, yeah, the, it's one of the uh, cornerstones of uh, sea country management. So our compliance powers uh, and strategies are that, uh, we've got uh, powers such as uh, name and address. And we also have been trained in eyes and ears. And uh, the legislation, we also have a few legislation on the state and, gov uh, state and government um, that grant us these powers. Uh, our activities are um, uh, patrol, uh, doing uh, vehicle and uh, customer patrols. We also do public engagement. Um, this helps us out a lot, especially when we, at the start, we were just handing out um, zoning maps and it changes uh, people's perspective of uh, compliance and they no longer be, um, they're not fearing being fined, we rather, uh, we rather educate them than um, find them. We also do, uh, uh, area patrols with uh, government agencies, and uh, we also do uh, patrols on our own, and we do a lot of reporting and investigating, and we report to the uh, uh, the certain government agencies. Uh, reef education is a, um, is what uh, one of the um, one of the proudest um, activities because we get to engage in uh, school groups. We also do presentation and talks uh, with um, tour tourism operators and uh, universities and other researchers. Um, and this also led to our brief trips and collaborations. So uh, once a year we take our group out to um, uh, on the tourism uh, vessel to actually show our mob uh, what's in their backyard. This also ties in with uh, generated programs. Um, we do a lot of talks around uh, forums, uh, conferences and forums. And uh, this was also reflected in our arts and craft and performance. And we use uh, numerous uh, communication products such as uh, 3D mapping, uh, videos, calendars, 
we even got um, our latest project is a VR um, presentation, and it basically describes what we do as uh, rankers. We are currently doing a uh, curriculum that we have to one day display to our schools. Yep, so um, some of the, the maritime cultural heritage uh, sort of work that we do um, within within our sea country space, you know, we, we still do have a number of different story places, um, different archaeological sites, whether it be uh, shell mining sites, uh, stone and fish traps. Uh, we also got uh, different hunting, gathering grounds, uh, campsites, and also um, the language and art and dance sort of play a role in, in, um, in telling the story and transferring knowledge of that cultural heritage within those places. Um, but through the, the range of programs, through the work that we do, um, you know, we do a bit of mapping and recording of cultural heritage values and sites, um, regular monitoring and surveillance, and um, follow up to check the, the health and condition of, of those places. Uh, with the management actions, uh, we actually um, restoring some of our shallow sites um, in, in collaboration with um, James Cook University uh, and uh, um, Kings Institute as well, and also um, you know, training and also uh, you know, doing our language lessons as well with transferring that knowledge. Talk a bit about the uh, maritime mobility. Yeah, uh, so we uh, recently got involved with underwater archaeology. Uh, this comes through uh, when we got invited to do a uh, shipwreck monitoring and part of that helped us to um, get in touch with a few people and actually learn new skills underwater. We also do um, reef monitoring and restoration. So, um, uh, at the start of our ranger program, I was fresh out of uh, the Crown Swans program, and that was actually a gateway to get us onto Reef Ranger with Queensland Parks and Wildlife to do the Cox and Reef surveys. We also um, do citizen site activities like reef blitz, and we also do a lot of collaboration with operations. Our pilot projects uh, would include uh, the coral larvae surveys. The Mars, uh, the Mars stars, the uh, Coral Nature Program, um, and the Kulpa Project. Um, we like to use these to um, get a better understanding of uh, sea country management um, and get an understanding on the science and data that goes behind it. And with uh, with uh, a few of these programs, we also keep an eye out for Crown of Swans as well. Um, being a part of the Crown of Swans program, you sort of uh, develop a habit where if you see a white patch on the coral, you go to investigate, so uh, the skills are still relevant. The lessons learned from all of this is, um, well, it developed um, we actually develop skills and uh, experience while diving. Um, got more involved with the coral and marine ID. Um, this also inspires uh, a few of our groups to do more art and design around it. We also enhance our skills through um, uh, training, uh, doing onboarded training, such as um, uh, um, COTS. Uh, uh, underwater drones, underwater archaeology, um, boat license, um, element of shipboard safety, and many more. Our collaboration with tourism and um, research and government is what help us uh, achieve these goals. Yeah, so just some of the uh, you know, opportunities coming out of this. Um, you know, so what what we need or what we've learned, and, um, and you know, you probably able to see that you know um, being involved in, uh, across the holistic, uh, broader um, you know footprint of sea country management. Cost cost is just one part of it. Crown of Thorns starfish control, and uh, but 
you know, we've got a traditional owners are looking at sea country in a more broader sense. Um, you know, it's everything to us. And so, you know, some of these opportunities is around, you know, valuing and trusting, resourcing traditional management, uh, whether that be through supporting capacity building, uh, supporting local business models out there, um, even that's whether it's through financial or through in-kind contribution uh, to those types of management systems that are in place, uh, to those local communities out there. Uh, genuine partnerships and collaborations, um, you know, the people that we work with, um, you know, we can say that, you know, we've got to a point where, you know, we can definitely say some of them, or most of them are genuine partnerships and we have to build on them into the future. And it starts with that foundation, having the general, uh, just a positive working relationship um, and then going forward. Uh, education and communication, uh, obviously, is a big part, not just within compliance, but, you know, across the board, trying to educate uh, the wider society about um, for wider community, wider society, and our general public about the importance of, of, of um, traditional owner perspective on the reef, uh, traditional owner knowledge, and our science, and what we could what we what we will bring uh, to that to that table in terms of management, um, supporting access to country, more so for our different uh, landowners and for our government um, authorities across the reef space allowing and supporting traditional and access to those areas to uh, manage country, um, supporting the continuation of, of connection to country, um, but then uh, you know, acknowledging and supporting us uh, going forward, which will obviously will lead to uh, implementing some of those uh, general priorities within you know, the Reef 2050 plan and, and things like that. So in conclusion, um, I guess I just want to say is that um, you know, the, the reef space, even though you know we know that it is um, rich in natural and cultural, or rich in natural values, ecological values, yeah, we, we want to remind people that sea country, the Great Barrier Reef, is also very, very significant to traditional owners. You know, we through our different worldview of looking at the reef. And um, you know the, the need for traditional owners to get involved within sea country management, knowing that there are benefits and outcomes there uh, towards the state and national priorities and in, in international space. Um, but more or less, um, you know, you know, we, we all got a role to play. Um, we can all partner together, work together. At the end of the day, it's for the uh, long-term sustainability of the reef, and uh, you know, Cox. Is just one of those things, but yeah, you know, there's a bigger, bigger picture there to look at. Yeah. Um, I would like to thank you for an opportunity for us to speak, especially under the circumstances that happened today. Um, hope everyone uh, uh, understand, uh, got a better understanding of what we do, and how we can move on into the future. Thank you.